we're a consulting group and uh, we, we design and project manage infrastructure and buildings around the world, um, although we're a British registered company. We have about 10,000 people and of course our costs are the costs of our people, so uh, where they are are the capacity of, of, of the Arab organisation. And we have at the moment about 40% of our people, about 4,000 people in the UK, and the others spread between the Americas, Asia, uh, many nowadays in China and Australasia, with a few sprinkled elsewhere. One of the reasons we, we operate the way we do is partly for, for um, opportunity for individuals, but also, of course, it makes us a more robust organisation. So when one part of the world is suffering, as indeed Europe to some degree is now, Asia is booming. So there are different uh, opportunities for us uh, to, to spread our capacity around the world. Um, we have, of our 4,000 people in the UK, we actually attract fees from UK sources for about 28% of our business. So that does mean that quite a large number of people in the UK are exporting their time and effort overseas, of course. That's our export model. And um, it therefore matters to us uh, that the playing fields are level. So I think when the CBI work on issues to keep the playing field level, that's very important to us. Last year, I remember the issues on related to the Bribery Act, that was quite important. And I think um, uh, the, the lobbying that took place was effective at reducing some of the issues that may have meant we were worse off than other countries. Um, to come, perhaps, uh, could be the area of uh, carbon taxes and those uh, uh, climate change issues where uh, you know, there is a risk that, the, that Britain could be um, put at a disadvantage if we don't apply the rules in the same way as everybody else. So it's those kinds of international issues where I think um, the CBI can certainly help. Well, we um, have uh, grown largely organically. So uh, we've very little of our growth has been through acquisition. We have had some small acquisitions. Um, and we've done that generally through successfully winning projects in new locations. So many years ago, we won the Sydney Opera House in Australia. And that led us to having some people on the ground in Australia. We took on some local Australians and they formed a business that's now two and a half thousand people around that country. Uh, and so that was much of our growth strategy, if you like, in, in those early days. Generally speaking, it's been our export uh, basis has been on the, on the grounds of getting a project and, and, and winning in that way. More recently, uh, we have been very active in countries like China. And in a place like that, uh, it's very important to have a local long-term uh, relationship with the client base, with the governments, with the approving bodies and so on. And we also, though, don't want to just be Chinese. We want to be an international body or a British body bringing in expertise in combination with a local uh, group that understand the local politics and the local uh, needs. And so it's this kind of local international combination that tends to work for us. We find ourselves very often working in a third country where perhaps we don't have a base, but we, we, we know the client, we have operations in the client's country, we have skills in a second country, and we can bring both of them to bear in the third country. So it's these sort of win-win-wins um, that, that tend to help us. The coalition has been very supportive of business. Um, they do want to understand what the obstacles are to business, and if we were able to tell them and uh, explain how those can be removed in a way that uh, clearly complies with, with uh, European law and so on, then they will be very willing to listen, I've, I have found. Uh, as you know, the government has also taken missions to various countries, and it's different missions in different countries, of course, and I know that John cridlin has been on some of those. I've been with him. Uh, in places where hierarchy and status and so on really matter, so in places like India, in China and so on, it's really valuable just to be on one of those missions, just to have your name on a list, to be associated with that. Uh, the local culture really admires those kinds of things. But I also think it's a bit more than that. It also engenders a friendship between the nations. It engenders relationships between high-powered individuals. Now, these are not often the individuals that are going to give contracts, but the people that do give contracts can see the relationship and see that it matters and see that it matters to their bosses. And uh, I think that, that generally is good for business.